Okay, there's a little bit more to the behavior of these new intervals that we need to talk about. In particular, in particular, resolutions. They need to resolve correctly and they need to be set up correctly. Um, which the kind of music theory term for that is the preparation. They need to be prepared correctly and they need to resolve correctly. And um, the good news is that you only have to kind of remember one thing for the preparation and the resolution, and that's don't use a skip or a leap. Um, they have to be prepared by a step, and they have to resolve by a step, which means in second species counterpoint, we're fairly limited on where we can put skips and leaps, actually. So let's look at this one. This is our first dissonant interval. This is our second. So it has to be prepared by a step, and that can be in any direction. So here we're at a D, we're going to step down to a C. So we've stepped into the dissonance. You always have to step into the dissonance, and you have to step out of the dissonance. So here to get out of the dissonance, we're going to step down. That's the resolution. So the preparation and the resolution. So, and both the preparation and the resolution have to be consonant intervals. They have to be the, you know, officially approved first species intervals. Those are our consonant intervals. So now we have a leap here, and that's totally okay because it's between two consonant intervals. Now we go here, and we have a consonant interval, but here is our next dissonant interval. Okay, so let's look at that one. We have consonant here. We have a third. We're going to approach the second, the dissonant interval, by a step. So we're going to step into it, and then we're going to step out of it into another consonant interval of a fifth. So this is our dissonance. We're going to step in in the preparation. We're going to step out in the preparation or in the resolution. So those new intervals that we just learned, that would be the second, the fourth, augmented fourth, diminished fifth, seventh, and ninth. Those are now allowed on the offbeat as long as we step in to the dissonance and from a consonant and we step out of the di dissonance into another consonant. Okay? You can almost think of it as these two notes, this B and a D are a skip apart, and we're just filling in the gap. That's kind of what's happening here. Um, we're using a lot of skips, and the same thing happening here. Those are a skip apart, and we're putting a note in between. We're filling in the gap. Um, that's kind of literally what's happening here, but we're, we just have like a whole bunch of rules to govern the, the change of it. Okay, so those are all our rules for second species counterpoint. Now, there are, there, there are a lot more things to look at in terms of passing tones, um, the, the types of skips and leaps you can do between consonant tones, and then we have this thing called neighbor tones. That's all coming up in the next section. Let's do one more video. I'm going to do a quick recap of everything that is the, the official sanctioned rules of second species counterpoint. And then we'll move on to how um, all of those passing tones work together.